I'm certainly out of my element right now. So we'll see how this goes. All right, everyone? I'd like to start by saying that I didn't have the most conventional childhood. Is there anyone who's been raised by an artist, a visual artist, an author, a musician, the artistic mind? OK, so you might know what I'm talking about here. But for those of you that, that weren't brought up the same way I was, it can be a wild ride. <laughs> There's certainly some advantages. I'm at Alanis Morissette when I was eight years old, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> I've had the first-hand experience of watching some of Canada's greatest musicians make music, write songs in my living room. It's truly, truly an honor. But with the advantages come a lot of struggles. There's drug addiction, alcoholism, health problems, repossessed cars, <laughs> many, many issues. That moment, that's my dad's first Juno Award. Awarded for his artistry. As it turned out years later, I found he had to trade that Juno in exchange for dental work. For survival, in the, in the moment of survival, an award doesn't really mean anything. I am, um, I've been given this gift of compassion and understanding for artists and, and those that dedicate their lives to the life of living the life of an artist. The thing is, everyone has an art scene and everyone appreciates their art scene. Hamilton included, right? Our beautiful art scene. The question is, do we understand the hard work, the struggle, the effort and the support it takes behind the scenes in order to make that art scene happen. The individual stories, if you will. If you walk out of this hallway and look on the walls, they're all Hamilton musicians. Each one of them has their own individual story and I know some of the stories, some of the struggles that those people have had to deal with. So let me tell you about an accountant. And I know, right? What does an accountant have to do with <laughs> the arts? But let me, like, Ben has given his all for Hamilton music. He is committed to supporting musicians through their financial troubles. And because he's a music lover, he was raised by a musician, in fact. Ben is quite a character. But on a number of occasions, he's told me these really interesting stories. One of them really stands out in my mind. He was picking up some documents from my house and he kind of launched, he's casual about it. Like, it's not like, I am going to tell you this story now. He just kind of off the cuff. And he says, you know, Madeline, I was six years old, and I was awoken by a commotion downstairs in my kitchen. And I thought, what's going on down there? And I could hear the sounds of frivolity and excitement and maybe some alcohol consumption. So Ben, six-year-old Ben, goes down the stairs, finds his mother at the stove making a meal, a post-gig meal for the musicians at her kitchen table. His dad was at the kitchen table. And his dad sees him and says, Ben, come in here. I want you to meet my friend. Ben, this is my friend Duke. Duke, this is my son. He loves music. The man that six-year-old Ben was introduced to was Duke Ellington. From that moment and all those moments that he experienced, he dedicated his life to music. Ben is part of our Hamilton music community, not because he's a music maker, but because he supports those that are. Pardon me. But with this dedication, he's also struggled. He's, he's committed to living the life of an artist. He gave up a very successful career as a corporate accountant because this is what he calls his instrument. This is how he contributes to the music scene. For me and for many, music is one of those things that engages people. It speaks to people. It connects individuals with the world around them. Music can start a revolution. Music can drive change. Music and songs can capture a moment in time, a historical record. Wade in the water, blowing in the wind, imagine. These are all songs that have changed, saved lives. 
So there's this organization. It's called SOCAN. It, it takes care of all the money. It's the Society of Composers, Authors, and Music Publishers. It's a Canadian not-for-profit. And what it does is it takes care of all the recording rights for Canadian musicians. They put this handy-dandy little infographic together. This shows the reach that Canadian music has on the world. In fact, Music Canada reported this as their sales number for 2013 for, for sales. That doesn't include performance fees. That doesn't improve, include hiring a road manager, hiring a sound engineer, song syncs, licensing. That's one component. So it's clear music is part of our economy. Music is part of our community. It's important. Ironically, Stats Canada reported that musicians earn 43% less than the average income nationally. Their wage being an average of $27,000 a year, which falls below the low income cutoff, which is the poverty line. I wondered, what an interesting thing, right? Give so much, they have so little. There's this organization that I'm familiar with and I really love. It's called the Unison Benevolent Fund. And what it is, is it provides it's also not for profit and it provides healthcare counseling to musicians and in addition, emergency financial funding. So if you're a guitar player and you break your finger, Unison will help you with some of your missed income. It's great. I wondered from this, what else is out there? What else exists? And as it turns out, all of the major music cities that we're familiar with, Glasgow, Nashville, Austin, Seattle, they all have infrastructure to support their music community. They have health alliances. Well, Hamilton has a goal. The city of Hamilton has a goal. Us as an art scene has a goal. Maybe I'm a little biased, <laughs> but Hamilton needs to be known as a music city. Well, if that's the case, we need to act like we mean it. The city of Hamilton has a music strategy, has a music strategy implementation team. They've identified our music scene as an economic development driver. It's all in place. So light bulb. Hamilton needs a health alliance. Hamilton needs a collective that will provide access to free or discounted health care services for the members of our music community in need. Career specific, like drug counseling, dental, physiotherapy, all of these things that aren't covered by OHIP that are considered luxuries. And actually, I was upstairs, and I'm totally off book here, speaking to a musician who just had dental work done. He said it was $6,000. And I said, oh, wow, well, maybe next time we talk, I'll be able to cover that for you somehow. He said, well, my wife is a teacher. So unless, as they all say at the Junos, their partner has a real job, they're not getting their teeth covered. <sighs> you know, I was asked to speak about momentum. And in this case, and in any case where it comes from an idea, momentum is organic. Momentum is not manufactured. It's not something you can convince people is there when it's not. It comes from the heart, and it's driven by passion. And this idea, this idea of supporting our music community resonates instantly with so many people. I have had people come to me, doctors, lawyers, chiropractors, librarians, dentists, all committed to seeing this idea come to life, to seeing this through. They're all driven by momentum, heart and passion. And that's that revival. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.